reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippines. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth, as under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
seated for the passion reading and if the narrator and Jesus will come and use the podium and other readers may speak from the pew. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew one of the twelve who was called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and said the priests paid him 30 pieces of silver and from the moment Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus on the first day of unleavened bread the disciples came to Jesus saying where do you want us to make the preparation Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And the disciples became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to, the, to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of, the, of this fruit of the wine, of the vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to the disciples, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will scatter. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Don't all become deserters because of you? I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Do you know I must die with you? I will never deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Bethesda, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want. But what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So you could not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again Jesus went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, you will be done. Again Jesus came and found the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. 
Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayers are at hand. While Jesus was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with sword and cloak, and the chief priests and elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given the crowd a sign, saying, The bride of Christ is near. Arrest him. At once Judas came up to Jesus and said, See you, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. And the crowd came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with the swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. For all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, Peter sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that he may be put to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that you testify against? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to Jesus, Put you under oath before the living God. Tell us, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do you put me into prison? You have not heard the blasphemy. What is your verdict? The scribes and the elders answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in Jesus' face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter, sitting outside in the courtyard, a servant girl came to him and said, you also with, were with Jesus, the Galilean. But Peter denied it before all of them, saying, I did not know what you wanted from me. When Peter went out to the porch, another servant called the girl to him and said to the bystanders, This man who is here is an answer. And Peter denied it with an oath. I did not know what you wanted from me. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all of the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. Judas said, I must flee, for he came in innocent blood. But the chief priests and elders said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, Judas departed, and he went and hanged himself. The chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took 30 pieces of silver, the price of one on each of Christ's servant's death, on whom Now Jesus 
Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. And Pilate said to him, Do not fear any accusations or notes against you. But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. <coughs> at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to the crowd, Whom do you want me to release to you? Jesus, Jesus, the Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests and the elders had handed Jesus over. While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, wife sent word to him. I have nothing to do with that group of men, but say I will suffer a great deal for Jesus' sake. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And the crowd said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, You must now give us Jesus, who is called the Messiah. All of them said, Then Pilate asked, Why? What evil has he done? But the crowd shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Please do it to me first. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas, them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole court around them. They stripped Jesus and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, they spat on Jesus and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, the soldiers came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross. And when the soldiers came to a place called Gagotha, which means place of a skull, they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over Jesus' head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with Jesus, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who destroyed the temple and built it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking Jesus, saying, He saves others, he cannot save himself. If this man is there, let him come down from the cross now. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if God wants to. For this man said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Ella, Ella, Lema Sabatani. That is. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. 
The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea <coughs> named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. Joseph went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Joseph then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Marys were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what the imposter said while he was still alive. He said, After three days I will rise again. Therefore command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise Jesus' disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people. He has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, He has a guard So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Palm Sunday, we start our service with the blessing of the palms, and then we process around and through the church, waving our palms in excitement and singing and shouting out hosannas. But I'd like us to just take a moment and imagine with me, imagine ourselves at Woodstock. And Jimi Hendrix has just come on the stage. Can you imagine the sounds of those hosannas? How deafening it would be? And all the bodies would be pushing closer to get nearer to the stage. Just the intensity of that moment. And this is what I think is Jesus him standing upon that stage of like, and this is his Woodstock moment to those deafening sounds of the crowd shouting, Hosanna, glory in the highest. Now, maybe my analogy feels like it's a bit of a stretch, but I learned something in my commentary reading. You see, for the Greco-Romans, the palm had a very definite symbolic meaning. The palm shouted out victory. And for example, a victorious athlete in the ancient world wouldn't be given a trophy, but instead a palm branch. An ancient lawyer would affix palm branches to his door after winning a case. A general returning to the city in triumph would be holding a palm branch in his hand and might even wear a special toga covered with palm branch designs. 
So you see these palms are not simply objects to wave or leaves to soften the road. The palm is the symbol of the victory of Jesus Christ. For this is Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And today he is pictured as a conquering general, as having utterly routed and defeated his enemies. But what exactly is this victory? Who has been defeated and when? And we find our answer in Jesus' passion and through his death. He meets the forces of evil face to face. And the love of Jesus and the goodness of Jesus vanquishes and forever breaks the emptiness of death itself. The palms of the people of Jerusalem, these are an expression both of faith in this unconquerable king of glory and a recognition of the eternal nature of his defeat of the enemy, a foregone conclusion that evil doesn't have a chance. And then wait, what? Before we've even caught our breath from the excitement of the Hosannas, the story shifts and the crowd becomes an angry mob chanting, crucify him, crucify him. And just like that, Jesus is dead. Crucified on the cross with all its bloodiness and gore, so this Palm Sunday, it is an emotional roller coaster. And even though the story remains the same, we do not. And this is why I think we would probably really like to spend our time instead with the Hosanna crowd, that Woodstock crowd, skipping the passion skipping through the Holy Week journey with Jesus to set the destination instead to be from palms right to Easter lilies. But honestly, to appreciate those lilies, we have to work the soil of Holy Week. It is that time in the soil that helps us weather the hard times. It's the soil work that teaches us patience. It teaches us paying attention. It teaches us about cultivating effort and having to show up for things to grow. It reminds us of the joy of small, fragile, beautiful things and the pride in watching something we've invested ourselves in grow. It's that soil work, that is what shows us what healing feels like, the turning of compassion and the tilling of empathy. The soil work helps us stay grounded in the present, whatever that present might bring, because we understand perseverance and that each day is a choice about how we will experience it. And there's this invitation of, can we be like Jesus, who did not exploit his equality with God, but chose to live into his humanity? Because Jesus, he showed us the best qualities of being human, freely given sacrifice and freely given love, courage even when afraid, justice in the face of violence and oppression, and the strength of hope. So how do we live into and outwardly this humanity Jesus shows us? Because we need to. Every day there's another act of violence and oppression 
often targeted at the least of these, our children? How do we make sure every child grows up with dignity? How do we make sure every child grows up knowing justice? How do we make sure every child grows up knowing what it means to feel safe? Every day we have to ask ourselves, what will I do today to become a blessing for someone else? Can we be these blessings? Can we make ourselves an offering of gratitude to God on behalf of someone else? May we know the feeling of being given a palm, the feeling of placing a palm upon our doors, May all that we are be an outward and visible sign of blessing. Amen. power of resurrection, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the whole bright earth, so lovingly created, yet so compassionately redeemed, that it may speak again of the glory and majesty of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. Lord, have mercy. For all nations and peoples of the earth, to whom God shows no partiality, that all may be transformed by mercy to live together in hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. The Holy Church, whose life is hid with Christ in God, that in all its diversity, witness may be one, may to the one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For in all high places of authority, for whom Christ was put to death and was raised, that they may be led to govern with equity and justice bringing life to those in the shadow of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all, for all who have been baptized and given the garments of light, that they, with the whole church, may be witnesses to the gospel in daily life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who suffer in mind, body, or soul, for whom Christ is risen with healing in his glorious wings, that they may find light, perpetual, and blessed assurance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died and for all who, are, who grieve, that in Christ, who triumphs over death, they may find light perpetual and blessed assurance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all gathered in this assembly, that we, like Mary and Peter and John, may see the tomb empty and joyfully believing, walk in newness, newness of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the risen presence of our Lord, we commend all whom we pray and ourselves to Christ, to whom we give loud and praise now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and had their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciles us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts, sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, and Jacob and Rachel and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ. 
Please join me in saying the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And you get to stay right here because it's your birthday, right? Yes. You want to share your digits? Uh, 20. 20. Oh my gosh. Do you have a particular birthday wish? Dear Lord, happy birthday and many blessings to Nicholas. Give him 120 more birthdays. Fill this year with lots of surprises and joy and goodness and help him to reach all the things that he is striving for. And let his birthday be filled with a gigantic cake and ice cream moat of chocolate and strawberries and all yummy things blessed to be with his family and his friends. In your name we pray, amen. Happy 20th birthday. <laughs> Lita got her birthday blessing last Sunday and she is having her first time at Disney World. So when she gets back, ask her about it. Richard, raise your hand. I didn't, I forgot to put my glasses on. Oh, sorry. Yes, thank you. Everybody's blurry when I don't wear my glasses. So. <laughs> you want to share your digits? 81. Woohoo! Do you have any special birthday blessings? Dear Lord, give him good health. 181 more birthdays. Give him lots of fun things to do at the aviation. Oh, I don't know, I had a word cramp. Museum, at the Avi Aviation Museum. Let there be lots of fun things to do. Thank you for all the quiet ways in which he helps others. Let his birthday be surrounded by family and friends, good stories, and lots of laughter. In your name we pray. Amen. Happy birthday. <laughs> Alan, you want to share your birthday digits? 72. Do you have a birthday wish? Birthday wish? Mm -hmm. Good health. Good health. All right. Nice sleep. <laughs> Let there be good health and good sleep. Let your birthday be surrounded with your little grandkiddos and your children and all of your furry friends and chitlins. <laughs> Let your day be filled with laughter and love and good food and a wonderful year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. We have one more birthday to celebrate. Oh, is it? Is it you. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, and your digits? My digits, let's see, I have to go by year. It's for, uh, so I'll be 53. Um, and my wish is for us to be just filled, all of us, with blessings and good health and surrounded by each other and our family and our friends always. And to, well, my kiddos are, are, they're too far away for my, so I get a phone call on my birthday and that Amy makes me banana bread with chocolate frosting <laughs> and a big hug. <laughs> I love you. 
and 153 more digits for myself. Amen. Amen. <laughs> at St. Jude's. Oh, we love yeah. you and appreciate you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Uh, let's see. I didn't write down our announcements, um, so I'll do some from memory. Holy Week is upon us. So Monday, Thursday, our service is at 7. Good Friday, we have a 12, a 7. 4.30 is uh, Family Stations of the Cross. Our vigil is at 7. I forgot to check if we have any time slots open. It, um, if we do, please do sign up for vigil. Um, and then Easter Sunday is 8 and 10.15 with Easter egg hunt in the rectory backyard and cascarones to follow. Uh, today, the kiddos will be uh, putting in confetti and then putting a little piece of tissue paper over the top so that it doesn't fall out until you swoosh it on your head for good luck for the also, year. Oh, yes, and adults with steady hands uh, can help as well. And if you're unsteady hands, you can still help. Um, Easter candy, this is probably, I think, the last Sunday to collect for Easter candy to fill up the eggs. Um, the Easter spring sale is out. Um, we're really close to having an, close to 50 people to do a blood drive. If you're able to donate, there's blood. There's um, a sign-up sheet. <laughs> we don't usually ask for your blood, not a requirement. Um, and we have our blessing box, which you may have noticed, uh, the white box. It's uh, take what you need, leave what you can, and we have a food drive going to support that. Um, is there an announcement? Anyone? Yes. Thank you. And if anyone wants to learn how to make compost, I'll be doing it in the power hall. Thank you. So, uh, helping the altar guild clean and decorate next Sunday, I mean, Saturday at 9? Starting at 9. Starting at 9. Amy and I had the date wrong, so I'll tattle on ourselves. We didn't bust out the, the, the uh, ladder. So, clean from here down. <laughs> um, Oh, shucks, I lost my train of thought. Oh, um, we will be having a fire will go out electronically um, on the 23rd. And just to thank you. Uh, after our, uh, during the coffee hour, um, we're going to have a Trans 101 conversation. Yes, PowerPoint and conversation. Um, and then the Sunday after that, which I believe is the 30th, we will have um, Matthew from Creation Care with us, and he'll have a presentation after our service. So we're going to be a happen in April. Um, any other announcement? Anyone? Will, yes. Yes, please sign up for Second Eucharist. That's okay. I'll call, stop calling it second Eucharist. I think that's hilarious, but uh, <laughs> I crack me up. So <laughs> if you can't laugh at yourself. Um, and thank you to everyone who has signed up for coffee hours. Um, and uh, so Rick is going to give us a, a brief treasures report. And we're going to start doing these quarterly so everyone can kind of have an idea of where we are financially. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rick Gomez Nieto. I sit on the vestry and I also sit on the finance committee for St. Jude's. Uh, and I'm also Lauren's dad. <laughs> and, and Paige's, but I, I won't bring Paige up because the earth will need to open up and she'll need to be swallowed in. <laughs> so I just want to briefly speak on our financial 
All right, this will work. Uh, our financial condition is, is very strong. Uh, currently, we have over $120,000 in cash. Our investments total up to $80,000. So our total liquidity is $200,000, uh, and our liabilities are $80,000. Um, our mortgage, that's our only liability, is currently at $80,000, uh, and we, we should pay this off uh, in about five years, uh, or maybe sooner. Um, the liquidity is two and a half times uh, our liability only, so we have uh, a strong, a strong uh, uh, funding for for our church. Um, our revenues are approximately seventy thousand uh, dollars, and our expenses are approximately ninety four thousand dollars. So currently, we are running this year a twenty four thousand dollar deficit, but it's early in the year. We're just finishing up the first quarter. Uh, so we have plenty of time to catch up with that. Um, our expenses are generally linear, uh, consistent monthly. Uh, our revenues tend to be seasonal. So Easter, Christmas, country fair is usually when we get uh, a lot more revenue in, into, the, into the church. Um, March 31st given statements will be calculated uh, and we'll do, this, we'll do this every quarter so you get an update on how we're doing financially. Uh, just that to ensure you guys have an up to uh, up to date uh, idea of the giving into the church. Uh, so that's uh, that's all I have for now. Thank you very much. And thank you to everyone who uh, gives of your time, your talents, and your financial treasures. Uh, without all of you, we couldn't keep all of our ministries going. So thank you. Oh, yes. Uh, Lauren, do you want to stand up? I, I, I missed a blessing. So Lauren was made Cadet of the Year for the entire New York entire State New York Wing. Wing. So that's incredible. <laughs> and, and uh, and because of this, she's received a $40,000 scholarship for college. So congratulations. <laughs> so if you will rise for the prayer over the people. Let us bow down before the Lord. Grant almighty God that the people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.